Welcome to the Chris and Sam podcast. Pull up a bar stool and join us for a random conversation, guaranteed to make you think or your money back. Hello, Chris. Hey, Sam. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty tired, actually. Yes. Yes. I know all about tired. I did a full week's work this week. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I want to talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, how's your week been? Well, I've been working all week as well. And then I had my horticulture course, which I'm doing uh, sort of, what's the word I want to use? It's, part time? Uh, yeah, very part time. Correspondence? Part time correspondence, part time coursework. And, and we've got lectures and, oh, not lectures, workshops. Okay. Uh, it's completely free. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember you telling me about it. It, was a bit of, it sounds like a bit of a score, actually, if you're into the horticulture thing. Yeah, I can't remember who actually runs it, but it's some sort of government initiative. But it's it's quite interesting. We started with 28 people, and it's been whittled down to 10. And, and the tutor says that's normal for this sort of thing. And, uh, well, at the moment, we're learning about pests and diseases on plants. Cool. But but horticulture is not something you want necessarily as a as a job. It's what you want to do for fun. Is that right? Yeah, I was potentially going to only going to have a short term contract for my work, and I was going to have this for the CV. So I get horticultural level three national certificate of horticultural level three, as well as learning things that I can use in the pumpkin giant pumpkin growing realm. Cool. And so you have been enjoying it. That was the big question I was going to ask. Yeah, I just got behind in the last couple of assignments, but I'm going to smash them out tomorrow. And today I was in Tauranga for my nephew's first birthday, which was pretty cool. Ooh. And on the Lots way... Lots of coke, coke, um, not cocaine, coke, Coca-Cola and, uh, and lollies and stuff, I guess. Not too bad. It's more fruit juice and water. I'm on the water, actually. Uh, I've actually reduced my sugar intake greatly in the last five weeks. Oh, right. So I pretty much haven't really had anything. Oh, I cool. had a chocolate biscuit about four days ago, and that almost blew my mind. <laughs> One of the side effects of not having sh- so much sugar in your diet is you don't get hungry all the time. Yeah. You're never hungry. It's interesting because uh, only yesterday I was listening to uh, Tim Ferriss's podcast with Margaret Show. Show. Oh, very good. And um, yeah, and she was saying the same thing. They, they had a bit of a chat about that. It was it was a good podcast actually. And um, basically, uh, yeah, she was saying, I, I just can't believe I don't snack anymore because I don't feel hungry because that she's doing the slow carb diet and no, sh- you know, cutting out the sugars and the breads and yeah, I have I've that. just uh, focused on the sugar side of it at the moment. Uh, so I ate my share of pizza and little mini savouries today. <laughs> so yeah I managed to not have any sugar at this party today and there wasn't that much to be honest so it was pretty good and the kids were really good and I've also I'm drinking a lot of water right now tomorrow actually I'll skip on the way back from Tauranga uh, just outside of Tauriko I think it is there's a little if you've ever been that way there's a little metal shed looking thing and it used to be a tyre shop and then it was selling cars and today, you will not believe this, I went past the life-sized animal store. A what? The life-sized animal store was what the sign said. And it was like, <laughs> uh, my, I text this to my sister who lives in Towering, where I've just come from. And she thought I was joking about these giant toys that they've got the kids. There's like a giant alligator, a giant unicorn, and a giant shark. That's when you say giant, you're like life-sized. Yeah, well, in the soft toy uh, situation, it's giant. And she thought I was talking about that, and I said, no, I actually came across the life-sized animal store. And out in this area, there, outside, there was like a dinosaur, a giant turtle, a wolf, and a whole bunch of other animals, all made out of resin or something. I don't know what they so, are. So like- and they're all painted properly, but it's the life-sized animal store. On the so side just, of the road. <laughs> so just so I've got this clear in my head, you know those little things, little cows and sheep yeah, and yeah, stuff that yeah. you have when you're a kid, yeah. and they're like a couple of inches yeah, yeah. big? That's the same as that, only life-sized. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're all outside the shop. 
and it was, was we were recording the Sunday, and it was like Sunday afternoon. So I don't know what the demand is for life-size animals and having a store on the side of the road on the way to Tauranga, but it's there if you need it. And you didn't stop? No, it was sort of a what WTF moment as I'm driving past, <laughs> trying to because I saw the sign and I couldn't I couldn't work out what that meant. And uh, and then you saw the and animals, saw, and then I saw the animals. So oh it was God. it was pretty crazy. That is that's I I'm I'm curious to find out what they're, they're worth now and they, how heavy they are they and look, how easy they are to move and stuff and they, and are they pinned to the ground? Is there a chance a kid will climb on top, crushing another kid as it topples over? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> They looked very good, so I'm thinking they're not cheap. Yeah. And I, I can't imagine someone just driving along going, oh, look, there's a horse that's not real. I need one of those. Uh, yeah. Uh, it yeah. boggles my mind. I wonder if we can use it in our movies. I wonder if we can go and do a movie about it. Woohoo. I think we should do a podcast about it. <laughs> we might have to do an on, 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 on scene site pod, on yeah. site post, podcast. And, so uh, oh, yeah. That's crazy. So I'm currently drinking a lot of water right now. I'm actually donating plasma tomorrow. Oh, good. I've never done plasma. They keep... I've donated blood for a long time, and every time you go in, they're always like, have you thought about donating plasma? And I'm like, eh, sort of. So anyway, I signed up for it. Is is that a bigger deal to do that? Donating so? blood takes usually 20 minutes. Uh, they just take the whole blood out of your arm. That's it. Plasma takes about an hour, they tell me. They suck all the blood out of my arm, split out the plasma. All of the blood. Yeah. You know. <laughs> All of it. Yeah. <laughs> they, and then they split the plasma out of the blood and keep that, and then they pump the blood back into my body. So we'll see how that goes. They said, I, I, I'll, get a, I'll get a cold feeling as it goes through my uh, veins and back into my body. And they put a anti-coagulant in there. with it, I think is what they told me. Cool. So um, I get to sit there and play on my phone for about an hour. Cool. Well, you can tell us how that goes. Speaking of which, I did watch um, Dracula, the Untold Story, the other day. Oh. Movie? Have you seen it? No. I'm no just it's to it's think, pretty I'm good. I think what that one is. So it's it's actually Dracula, but it's sort of like the human side of Dracula. And he's and he's um, in order to save his kingdom. He's a he's a prince of a kingdom with no army um, from the Turkish invaders. He uh, you know goes finds a vampire and goes into a deal with it and uses his vampire. How old, how old is this film? It's was only it? just come out. It's at the movies. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've never heard of it. It shows how onto it I am. It, 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 looks, it, it, was, it was pretty good. I mean, I, when I saw it, the, the trailers for it four or five months ago, I was like, wow, I've got to see that. So I finally saw it. So, yeah, it's good. I cannot remember trailers. That's <laughs> shocking. Yeah. I, shocking. I, I'm terrible with the names usually. Ah, uh, yes. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go, oh, I saw the trailer, but I have no idea what it's called. <laughs> but this one, yeah, no, because I've just seen it. So, yeah, it was good. I thought it was worth with. I so. finally saw Guardians of the Galaxy last night. Yes? Yeah, it was good. And? It was good. Yeah. No, I, I thought it was great. I saw it opening night. I can't remember much things about movies. And when I watch movies with my brother-in-law, he's got a photographic memory. Oh, so right. he starts telling me how it all fits into the Marvel Universe. And he's like, yeah. do you remember seeing this character in this movie? And I'm just like, yeah, I agree with everything, but I have no idea. <laughs> I, if he ever listens to this, sorry, Shane. I just, I, I can't remember things like that. Yeah. I, I must admit, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy. No, what did I see? No, no, that's right. My flatmate had um, Iron, Iron Man. And it was quite good because I was like... Oh yeah, Agent Coulson's in that, which I hadn't seen because I hadn't been watching Shield Agents of Shield before that movie, and da 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 da, da. and so it was starting to gel a little bit for me. Well, but yeah, I'd have to see the whole Ma- lot again. Ma- Marvel had a big convention um, a couple of weeks ago, and they brought out a big map sort of layout of all the movies that are coming out for the next six or seven years, I think it is, and there's just so many. Yeah. But I think the the cool thing with Marvel is, and we we were discussing this actually on the drive up to the twenty four hour film festival a couple of weeks back, because um, I was in a car full of geeks. Obviously, um, we were talking about this, and they were talking about you know the D- difference between DC and Marvel, and Marvel's really got a universe that interconnects quite yep, a, yep. quite well. You can see that. And quite DC is just like easily. let's do an origin story for this. Let's do an origin story for that. Yeah. Let's do a second origin story for this because we can do it better. 
I was like, well, it's an origin story. How often can you do that? <laughs> I know. So there's always stuff out there for people to watch. Mm, anyway, Which is good. So, um, yes, yeah, so I, I had a pretty busy week um, in that I worked full time. So, um, for the listeners, I got made redundant uh, six months ago ish, something like that. Sounds about right. Yeah. And then um, didn't do anything for a couple of months, which was cool. And then started tentatively looking for work. And actually, I was trying to set up my own business, but that didn't really work out. Uh, then I started really looking for work because I was starting to run out of money. Uh, and then I finally got a bit of part time work. So I've been working part time f- and still running out of money <laughs> for the last couple of months. And uh, so I'm working a couple of yeah, pretty much minimum wage jobs at the moment. But um, one of the ones I was working at is, is in the warehouse, and the warehouse manager was away last week on leave. So I did a full week's work, eight are till you, five. Are you a broken man now? Oh, man, I was knackered. I'd come, come home. I, you know, I went to karate and stuff but afterwards, but I was pretty pretty knackered. And it was, I, I sort of want to say mentally tiring, but... It definitely is. You have to go, it, it's very hard to do different shifts all the time. Yeah, well, this wasn't shifts. Oh, no, was, no, but it depends, like, if you've only been doing two days a week or whatever. So I used to work I was with doing it. mornings. Yeah, so I used to work with a guy, uh, and before he came to work with us, he was in a temp agency, which is really good. The work was very varied, but so were the hours. It yeah. Would, I think it would do my head in after a while. Yeah, um, and, but yeah, I, th- I think it was just, uh, there was a lot going on, and um, didn't have time for tea breaks and stuff like that, and you know, you barely got your lunch break, and, and all the rest of it, and um, a little bit of pressure in that, so it was, it was tiring, but it made me think about really um so your job do you really love what you do uh i love it more than my last job exactly my point see i do you know that that was really the question i want to get to is do you know anyone who really actually loves their job i don't think i've ever had a job that i really really loved it depends what your motivator is i know people that love their job because they get paid a lot yeah yeah and i've never been that worried about but I don't know if they love their job. They yeah. love the money side of it. Yeah, they love the money. Not so the job. nothing, no one springs to mind. Yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, my brother-in-law does. Yeah, what's he do? Locksmith. Locksmith. Yeah, but he's self-employed. He loves it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because um, I, I mean, I I know I love training and teaching and that sort of thing, and I would probably do well in a, a job like that, and I'd actually probably enjoy it if I was teaching the training the right sorts of things. Um, you know, something that I was passionate about. But, um, yeah, uh, I just I was just wondering how many people actually love their job. So if you are listening to this podcast and you like me, me, I love my job, I want you to put a comment in the show notes. Yeah, let us know. You, yeah, let us know. And, and what we might do, and I'm just winging it here, Sam's looking at me going, uh-oh, what's he going to say? I, I've got an idea what you're going to say. Yeah. We may actually call you up and get you on a podcast and have a bit of a chat about that. So that would be pretty cool. I mean, for us anyway. So, uh, yeah, if, if you're one of these people that you know really are doing what you love to be doing, I want to hear more about that sort of thing and I want to know how you get in that position and, um, yeah, for my own uh, selfish reasons. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so um, that was pretty much my little thing on jobs. Um, yeah, I'm going back to part-time next week, so the money is going to be disappearing a little bit more. So um, I'm sure you'll cope. Oh, I'll manage. I'll manage. Always do. Excellent. It's good to hear. <laughs> so I know you don't know this, but our friend Adam got robbed. Oh, really? For the second time this year. Yeah. Uh, not very happy about it, obviously. And um, like burgled robbed. Yes, yes. Because yeah. you know that's the difference, eh? Robs when you're confronted. Yes. By, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I used the wrong word. Sorry. Just checking. Uh, but so it was the second time this year, but he has been in two different houses because someone did say on the Facebook update, hey, did they come back after they realized all your original stuff got replaced by insurance? And he said, no, I'm in a separate place. And he's got some really fancy gear. Like unbelievable stuff. Is that got or had? 
Well, the first time they took a whole bunch of stuff. The second time, they must have run out of time and only took a few things, and he actually said they left some of the real cool stuff behind. Yeah. So i I got to say, Adam's probably one of the unluckiest people I know. It's you know, like, it, every, it, always with stuff. Well, it se- yeah, it seems to be. But he does come out the other side as well. Yeah, no, he does well as well. well. Yeah, he, yeah, I don't know. So yeah. my question is, have you been robbed? Sorry, burgled. I have been burgled once, and it was quite funny, actually, because um, it was, I think it was New Year's Eve or something like that. I was working um, quite a few years ago. I was working at the Tarapa Tavern. Yep. And so I came home. I think we had a few drinks, staff drinks, after after work, you know, as, as you do when you work in a bar. So I wasn't really um, fully cognizant when I got home. Yep. Got in. Place was a bit of a mess. Hit the bed. Woke up next morning and went, hang on, the place is not normally this much of a mess. And they had emptied everything out. So uh, I had a little louvre, uh, not louvred, but one of these little um, door windows that open yep, up. Yep. And it had been open a little bit and somebody got in. So I, you know, I did the police thing. I've, I've been robbed. And they said, what are they taking? I'm like, honestly, I have no clue. I have no clue. <laughs> there was all my CDs were spread around, but they didn't take any of them which says a lot about my music taste, I think. Um, <laughs> I think that says a lot. Anyway, so um, I think they may have taken some money that was lying around, not like there was much or anything. Um, the cop came round two days later and they had a, a van, and it turns out that it was a runaway girl who was like 14 or something, and she'd broken into a whole bunch of places on that one night. All oh, right. And they caught her, and they caught all the stuff, and they they've got all the stuff in the van, um, and they said, "Come down and pick what what's yours." This woman cop, and I'm like, "Oh yeah," I'm looking through, and there's nothing, there. and then I see a lion red shirt. So at the time, they had these Hawaiian shirts, yes, I remember. with the yes, lion I red know, fish know, on it. I know and stuff. exactly what you're talking about there. Yeah, so I'm like, "Oh, that's mine." And this cop just looks at me, and goes, "Really?" I'm like, "It's did it's, you have? It's my uniform for work. Yeah. I wear that at work." She goes. <laughs> Really? And I'm like, yeah, that's... Shut up. <laughs> and that's the only thing the woman, the girl, took out of my house. That's crazy. So, yeah, that's the only time I've been burgled. No, I've got... No, I care. Oh, it's the only time I've been burgled, but I did have an interloper once. Um, so we had a... I, I was going out with someone... Well, actually, it was my ex-wife, but when we first started going out, and uh, she dumped her boyfriend who is a real tech guy um and first of all he started he bugged the house which was interesting yeah so uh, how, how long did it take for you to click onto that well no we were doing a crossword one day and um the phone rang and she picked it uh, ellen picked it up and the guy said seven down as unicorn or whatever it was and then hang up, and she goes, "Ooh, it is too." So, um, uh, what an idiot! So, anyway, so bug the house, and then one day um, we were having. Oh, we moved. We we got a place together. You know, things got serious. We got a place together, and so we uh, we decided we'd have a, a party. You know, a housewarming party. And he broke in the night before and cut all the cables to all the stereo. Um, he sounds so awesome. Yeah, yeah, and put um, little signs on all the photos in the house and, and little speech bubbles. Did he, and cut, did he cut your face out? No, no, but it was really funny. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, uh, you know, it was her stereo, not my stereo. It didn't touch my stereo, thank God. Um, I, I wouldn't have been so forgiving if he'd touched my stereo. Um, <laughs> but it took months and months to find all the stuff. So one, th- the funniest thing was six months later, I... Um, it's winter, and I grabbed my Converse boots out of the back of the wardrobe, yep. those white boots with the, the red lining inside, yep. and I throw them on, and I start walking around. I'm going, my feet are real cold. And I took them off and just cracked up li- laughing because what he'd done is got tomato sauce and put it all over the red insoles, which you can't tell, and <laughs> I stuck my feet in this. He sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is he's still out there probably doing this to people. Um, yeah, I think um, I think my ex screwed us both up in the, mentally for a bit there, so yeah. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> good to know. Consistency <laughs> is the key. So yeah. I've spoken to him since. I haven't spoken to my ex, so. Oh, okay. (laughs)
So I've got two stories. One involves me and one doesn't. So the first story is I was living with a 75-year-old bonsai grower. And for some reason, to make things easier for him, he wouldn't look, lock the back door. So I came home and he says, all, all the every cupboard in the whole house was open. And he's sitting in the lounge watching TV and he goes, oh, I think we got burgled. I was like, oh, okay. And I'd already been into my room and I hadn't clicked that my whole desktop computer wasn't there. Like the whole thing. And this is a really, really old desktop computer. Yeah. Like they had taken the power board, they'd taken the mouse, and it was all wired stuff. It was none of this wireless stuff you can get yeah, now. Yeah. So they'd taken all of that. We worked out that they'd also taken my GPS TomTom for the car and his binoculars. And they left every other thing behind, including the brand new laptop and a laptop bag in the wardrobe, which they had looked in, but not very hard. Yeah. So that's this laptop right now. That you can see <laughs> the laptop that is recording, this yeah, podcast. and they didn't take any alcohol, they didn't take any foreign currency that he had sitting around. He had like British pounds just sitting there, he had all sorts of stuff. There was so much random stuff in this house that was worth money, or could but have been. they took the ancient wind up <laughs> desktop computer. And the thing that annoyed me about that was it was one month over being eligible for full replacement, a brand new computer, so. It wasn't worth my while. Oh, uh, bugger. Yeah. Second story, brother-in-law got woken by the police, knocking on his door at two in the morning. Actually, I think my sister got up, and they said, is that your van in the middle of the road? And his work van was in the middle of the road, all open. This is the locksmith dude, eh? Yeah. yeah. So some guy had uh, gone in the van, which wasn't locked. There's a, there's, a, there's a trend going here, people. Lock your things up. Yeah, yeah. And then he tried doing, he moved all the stuff around outside the house and then he was, I don't know if he was trying to get in the house or whatever, and he moved a sack barrow with a thing of fertilizer on it and then somehow broke it. We had, they don't know how that happened. And eventually someone was driving past at two in the morning, uh, realized something was wrong, rang the cops and the dog unit actually tracked this guy for, for a very long distance and they caught him and in, in between running away from the cops, he decided to try and break into another car to steal that. So I don't know how much time this guy had or how good he thought he was. I um, This just reminded me now, uh, my flatmate pointed out this um, story today when we were coming back from the gym. Um, we stopped for a coffee. And uh, this kid was running from police and got caught when he stopped to pat some kittens. <laughs> like, really? Was that no. in New Zealand? I don't know. I it was. I was like, I don't even believe it. It was something on Facebook. So, so you don't le- believe everything on no, Facebook. No, you don't. So anyway, leading on from that, I'm very paranoid that all my stuff's going to get stolen. I, it drives me mental. Yeah. Um, so here's a tip. I know Adam's getting cameras, some cameras put in before Christmas, and yep. the cameras don't prevent anyone, but they can record things. So I've actually got a camera at my place at the moment. Uh, it's a little D-Link one. They're quite cheap. Yep. And uh, that's actually my room right now. I'm showing Chris. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So the tr- so basically what it is, it's hooked up to the Wi-Fi. Yep. It will alert me if the camera's turned off or turned on. Yeah. And as soon as any motion happens in the frame, I get six photos emailed to me straight away. I've got a special Gmail account just to handle these photos. Because if I walk in and out of the room and forget to turn the camera off, obviously I'm going to end up with about... 56 photos spam yourself <laughs> spam myself i can also hear the audio that's going on in that room right now Ooh. and i can take a photo of what's happening straight now as well and i'll save it to my phone and i can turn it off and on from the phone so that's, that's cool. all really that's cool. cool and it's like 50 bucks that's pretty good the that's only good. downside to the one that i've got which is the 50 dollar one is it doesn't have any infrared leds on it so it can't record at night so if i'm going to get uh next version up i'll uh, get one of those so, but if you had an LED infrared light, yeah, it would work, or the camera has to be special for that. No, no, it would work. The camera would pick it all up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so and, so, so you might be able to get a, a an infrared LED. Oh no, no, separate. I think. I, well, maybe I'm not sure actually. Yeah, I, I don't know how it works. So yeah, I, that's I think what it I just asking. records a black and white image. But yeah. the really the, one of the cool things about the next models up, which I think are only about 120, is when they're working, if you've got multiple cameras, they'll bunny hop the Wi-Fi signal between the cameras. Right. So if your last camera is miles away from your actual Wi-Fi, 
it doesn't matter because it's going to bunny hop its way through all the cameras. Because my uncle had one that uh, stuck, I don't know how much it cost to be honest, but it stuck to the, the ceiling and it was a dome and you could move it by yeah, remote control yeah. as well, which was yeah. pretty cool. So the D-Link guys do a dome one and it does a 360 degree view of a room. Yeah. Not quite sure how well that would work. But they do a whole range, and they're not the only ones. There's Foz, yeah. Fozcam's a really big one in the States. Yeah. And that has the pan and tilt ones. I don't know if you've seen them with a the little antenna next to it. No. It's like a, it looks like a round webcam on a base, and when you log in on your phone or whatever, you can rotate it and go up and down and cool. turn it. So, yeah, um, it's pretty cool. We, we, caught, a, we caught somebody um, on camera at Tarapa Tavern when I was working there. And he, this was in the gaming room, and uh, somebody got up to get some more, put some notes into the change maker, you know, so it was old, didn't put notes in the machine back then. And uh, as soon as he got off his chair, this other guy came along, picked up his wallet, which he'd left on his machine, and walked out the door. So the guy came and said, oh, somebody stole my wallet. We got the um, a really good print off it, um, gave it to the police, had the police around, all that sort of thing, it was all good. About a month later, the guy comes back in, and we've got a pic, you know, a print off a frame yeah, yeah, sitting yeah. In, in the office at the back, and it was like, dude, there's that guy, there's that guy. So um, it was hilarious. This was one of the funniest things that's ever happened to me. Our, our boss was really sarcastic, Kevin yeah, Fraser, yeah. sarcastic man, brilliant guy. Anyway, I'm in the office as he's calling, so I was – on the cameras watching the guy to make sure if, if he left while the boss calls the local police station, which is out Flagstaff. And um, <laughs> I hear half of the conversation, right? So I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah we've got this guy. We've got his stuff. Yeah, the police report number is blah, 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 because we had it all written down. Um, yeah, I see. Uh, there's no way for you to get down here? Well, we do have a courtesy van. We could send the courtesy van to pick you up. <laughs> yeah, we'll come get you. <laughs> and I was, I was cracking up. And and the guy, so there's this 18 year old cop. It was the only one there. He got his girlfriend to pick him up and drop him off here at the pub. I'm not joking. I'm not making this up. Right? Awesome. And the guy gets out of the thing. 18 year old cop in uniform walks into the rapid tavern. This is quite a few years ago. I think it was still when you'd smoke in bars and that. So you can. Im- yeah, it's a while ago. Yeah, you can imagine what that would look like. The Tarapa Tavern is not one of the friendliest looking bars to walk in. And the guy walked in and went, ah, ah, ah. I went running over to it. Well, not running over, but over to him straight away in uniform, you know, so he knew our staff. And I said, Great, come out the back and we'll show you what we've got. The guy's still here playing on the machines. There he is, you know, looking at the camera. There's the photo, that's him. And he's like, right, right, yep, okay, I, I just need to make a phone call. And so he called for backup. Next minute, there's three police cars, six Excellent. cops. I think they even brought a dog, but they got the guy. Well, that's that's a good, good story there. It, it was really funny because the boss was like, when are they going to get you guys um, skateboards or whatever to get around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bicycles or something, you know? It was hilarious. Anyway, so that's my burglary story. Excellent. I do have to apologise if you can hear me chewing cashews. <laughs> I'm just hungry. Um, but that, I don't get hungry now that I don't eat sugar. <laughs> well, that, 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 yeah, well, I think it's just something to eat. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I haven't had anything since lunch. And not really hungry, but it's just that habit of eating something. Yeah, yeah. But Countdown did charge me wrong. So instead of paying about $3 for the bunch of cashews, they charged me 23 cents. So that was cool. Yeah. Dude, take it. Take it and run. Take it and run. So have we got any more drop kicks or kickstarts? Have we checked anything? Not for this podcast. No. Because we're almost out of time. Oh, we're out of time. Okay, that's cool. Because I want to check for our next podcast. Uh, how AFK and those other ones are, are I, doing. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that in the next podcast. Sweet. All right, so that's pretty much everything from me then, I guess. Yeah, I think this wraps up episode number... Seven? Seven.
Seven? It is seven. Yes. Lucky I think about seven. That. <laughs> all right. Um, so we'll catch you all later. And obviously, just so you remember, Chris, the Chris and Sam podcast dot com. Facebook dot com forward slash the Chris and Sam podcast. Yeah. And, yeah. And other things. <laughs> Twitter is Chris and Sam pod. We're all we're on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn or Pocket Casts. Oh, and Pocket Casts. But before we go too, Pocket Casts, we're going to have to. I need to check that out. They sent us a really cool um, email. Um, Sam had organised. Sam organises everything. Sam had organised it, and they said, "Dear Sam, and in brackets, and Chris, uh, <laughs> your your podcast is now included in po- uh, Pocket Cast. Is it? Yeah. Pocket Cast. Pocket Cast. Da 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 da. And it was a really cool email. And I'm like, damn, I need to check out Pocket Cast. You do. Now. I use it, and I I really like it. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, sounds like a good thing. So yeah, get hold of us. We'll be some show notes there. Um, there might not be a lot uh, of links in this one, maybe, but we'll there see. might be a few. I'm sure I can rustle something up. Yeah. All right. Catch you next time. Okay. See ya. Hope you enjoy the show. Make sure to subscribe, and we'll catch you next week. Don't forget to tell your friends.